radio in the American sector was created in 1946 by the U.S. occupying forces. My parents, who met in Berlin in 1946, were probably listening to Rios on their first date. My mother was an American Red Cross girl from Missouri, my dad a combat officer from Montana. Um, and Rios continued to broadcast throughout the Cold War, including into East Berlin and parts of East Germany. When the wall fell and Germany unified less than a year later, we thought, what do we need to do with these important institutions that played a key role during the Cold War period? Now that the Cold War is over, should they just go away or can they contribute to the new German-American relationship? And the idea on Rios was to create a commission, which we did in 1992, so roughly two years after Germany unified, to honor the work that Rios had done during the Cold War, but Rios no longer on the air was instead going to be through the commission sponsoring journalists from both Germany and the United States to spend time in each other's countries to learn about each other's countries and help tell their story accurately to American and German readers, viewers, and listeners. What I liked is that we had people in the embassy and in the German government who are thinking creatively about laying the groundwork for this new post-Cold War relationship. So we set up the RIAS Commission. We also set up a program that as American military bases closed in West Germany, because our troop levels were going down, that we would take their English language libraries and put them into schools in former East Germany who didn't have English language books. Someone on the uh, embassy staff came up with the idea of setting up an American academy in Berlin to try to advance cultural, artistic, and other uh, endeavors. And the RIAS Commission was one of those uh, structures that was created that said we were close together during the Cold War period, we're going to be close together in the post-Cold War period, but we need new creative ways of doing it. And so I think it was not any one moment, but that uh, creativity, that entrepreneurship sometimes that we don't expect from government officials that showed up so nicely in both the American and in the German governments. I was one of nearly 14 million Americans who spent two years or more of his life in Germany. I did it as the dependent son of a military officer. We had millions of Americans who served there in, uh, in Germany in the military. And it was therefore relatively easy during the Cold War for Germans and Americans to come together. We realized that as the Cold War ended and American forces started going home, those contacts that were so easy during the Cold War period were not going to be as easy going forward. So we needed to find new ways to bring German and Americans together. So we intensified high school exchange programs. We intensified other academic exchange programs. And then we thought, can't we use journalists to help tell the story of this new relationship? And what better way to honor what Rios did during the Cold War than to use the RIAS Commission as a way <clears throat> to have <clears throat> exchange programs that would amplify the message of this new relationship. And so I think it was um, uh, an inspiration grown out of the belief and understanding that we needed to find ways uh, to keep Germans and Americans in touch with each other. It's the great thing about the RIAS Commission is it has taken journalists from all over the United States, all over Germany, and put them into a whole variety of different places in both countries. So I think it has helped us get to know each other better on a countrywide basis rather than simply using the old channels that we had to connect during the Cold War periods. And so I think the, the great contribution has been to develop a, a generation and hopefully soon two generations of journalists with a better understanding of each country who we hope will have a lifelong interest in continuing to learn and then telling that story not just to the elites but to Americans and Germans who don't spend their whole life doing foreign policy work but need to understand the importance of this relationship. I always say 
foreign policy shouldn't be foreign to Americans. A foreign policy is only as good as its understanding and support by the American people. So if we want Americans to support the German-American relationship, the more they know about what America is doing with Germany, what's going on inside Germany, the better. And that's what all these journalists are helping to do and have done for decades.